Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. Today I have a video to do a review about one of the most notably horrific episodes of the Goosebumps 1990s TV show. I recently, about a month ago, <laughs> read the book for My Hairiest Adventure. And there's a, let me see real quick, a season one episode 13, 20 minute long single part episode that I have on this DVD right here for the blob that ate everyone. Or ate, yeah, ate everyone, not everything. Uh, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. I finally saw the TV episode adaptation from the TV show of this book that was okay. It had its moments. Um, the book was very silly. The TV show is horrifically awkward, and horrifically awkward in the worst possible ways, and we'll get more and more into that as this review goes along. This might be a lengthier Goosebumps episode review. I don't really do lengthy episode reviews. Uh, every once in a while you'll get one, like Not a Living Dummy 3 when I did that one. Uh, there's a couple other ones I did that were kind of longer than 10 minutes and stuff, but a lot of the time they were like 7 minutes long or so. This one's going to be a little bit longer because I have a lot of things, a lot of things to say and make fun of. Now, of course, I was first exposed to the TV show with all the big head hitters. Haunted Mask, Haunted Mask 2, uh, Welcome to Dead House, Werewolf Fever Swamp, Night of Living Dummy 3 was possibly the first thing I ever saw from Goosebumps. Read a lot of the books surrounding those when I was growing up, a lot of them, not all of them. But uh, I was always into those types of stories. I never really saw much of the TV show. I never really got to see it on Fox Kids when it was on there. I saw some reruns when it came to Cartoon Network many, many, many years later, like 10 years later when they were doing reruns around like 2010 or so. Great times. It was like the end of Cartoon Network being good. They stopped playing. I feel like, there's, I feel like my mustache is wet. I don't know why. It's not me. I don't know. It might be my water that I drank. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to the point, um, so that was around the time that like Billy and Mandy was off the air, Ed, Ed, and Eddie was off the air, all these things were gone, uh, Codename Kids Next Door I think had just ended or was about to end or had stopped showing reruns or anything, they don't show any of the good shows anymore on there, which is a shame because Billy and Mandy is a timeless cartoon, I will still stand by that as long as I live, but anyway, Cartoon Network got the rights to show a lot of Goosebumps, if not all of it. And I don't think I ever even saw this episode then. My first exposure, after this very long intro, <laughs> to this episode at all was not the book, and eventually it was JonTron here on YouTube, and I love JonTron. The first two things he talked about in his three-part, or well, it was a two-parter, but he talked about three different Goosebumps episodes that really got to him. It was Ghost Beach, which I love the episode and I love the show for the most part, uh, or I love the book and I love the episode for the most part, but he also talked about Don't Go to Sleep, which I just read, and he also talked about My Hairiest Adventure. And My Hairiest Adventure, to me, the book was fine. For the most part, it was fine. I didn't really give it a negative review. It was just kind of, it was what it was. It was silly, it was stupid at times, especially the ending. The ending is really dumb. Um, most of the book is very humorous, though. It's a very wild little story. This episode is probably the worst possible adaptation you could have done of that book. If you wanted to improve it, which is what the goal for a lot of people would have been to make that episode, somebody would have done this right. Now, it's directed by a fellow named David Wary Smith. There's a reason why he only directed one episode of this show. I don't know what this guy was thinking. I mean, I could have directed a better episode of Goosebumps than this. I mean, it's just, it is the most embarrassing, awful, cringy thing I've ever seen in my life. It's pretty bad. Now, mind you, I have not seen Don't Go to Sleep's episode yet. I've heard it's really bad. I've heard it's worse than this. I don't know. There's been some bad Goosebumps episodes I've talked about here on the channel. This is a really bad one, honestly. Everything about it, the filmmaking aspects, the um, the post-production stuff, like ADR, like when they go in and re-record the lines and stuff for certain scenes or record voiceover, everything about it's bad. The editing's bad and choppy. The ending is just horrific. It's just as bad as the book was. Uh, the book at least gave it a little bit of time to kind of settle in. This is just a 20 minute long story that just gets you right in the kisser, you know? Uh, where do I even start with this? For my hairiest adventure, basically you have the main character named Larry, who has a group of friends and they're in a band and they're playing some really good music in the books, in the show of the episode, and he's horrible. All of them are horrible. Their music is terrible. And if you wanted to add some humor to Goosebumps, that's fine. I have no problem with that. The problem I do have is the acting of the main character that plays Larry. This kid 
is awful. He is horrendous. And it's a mixture of the directing being bad from the director's standpoint. It's a mixture of the writing being bad and written by, like, old people. You can just tell the way the characters are talking. For example, the beginning, the beginning of the book in Larry's town, or the beginning of the book and the episode, in the town that Larry is in, there's a problem with all these stray dogs just everywhere, always chasing him, because for whatever reason these dogs hate his guts. And a lot of the town is getting kind of empty at the same time, too. So it's kind of this weird ghost town type of feel at times. And I'll give the episode that. It kind of encapsulates that pretty well. But Larry's always on the run from these stray dogs chasing after him all the time. And uh, at one point during the beginning of the film, or the episode, when he's running away from the dogs and they're chasing him, he jumps into a tree. And when he's running up to this, he's like, Leave me alone, you dumb dogs. And it's like, that's the literal delivery of this line. He is the most awful actor that I think Goosebumps has ever had. And I don't even entirely blame the kid. It feels like it's the director more than anybody, because he never came back to direct more episodes. And I don't know if it was his choice, or Fox Kids, or whoever. Somebody didn't want him to come back. They made the right choice, because <laughs> this was horrible. And a lot of Goosebumps directors for the TV episodes you would see come back numerous times. You'd see them direct some many great episodes, and this was not the case. <laughs> this one. It was not the case at all. Man, is it a stinker. I mean, it, it is... It's really bad. But it's, like, funny bad. Like, you ever liked Sharknado? You might like this. It's it's that bad. Uh, it, it's something that... And, and the thing that makes it worse, right? Not only is the acting bad, not only is the editing bad, not only is the writing bad, not only is there basically no music at all in the episode, and then there is some, some music and it's awkwardly placed and... Yeah, it's not good. Uh, <laughs> any of that stuff that happens, to make it worse, to make it all worse, when I read the book... I could see people saying there's an undercurrent little theme of puberty, right? The TV episode is not subtle at all. It beats that to death into the viewer. It just It is going to make sure that you understand this is about growing up in puberty and hair on your body. It tries its best to beat that into the viewer's head for like the whole 20 minute run time. If I have ever told you how awkward that conversation can be, for the first time, whether it be the kid's angle or the adult trying to tell the kid. It doesn't matter if you're a parent or a teacher trying to tell kids. It doesn't matter. It's always awkward. The whole conversation's awkward. The last people who should have addressed that is Goosebumps. <laughs> it's a TV show. It shouldn't have been them. Now, again, I could see an argument that in the book, which is right here, I could see people saying there's an undercurrent of that theme here. I could get that. I could understand that. And, of course, the kids pick up a lotion bottle, and in the episode, they, like, just break into abandoned houses and use their garages as their band practice. That's what happened in the episode. It wasn't in the book like that, as far as I know. It was at Larry's house or one of the other kids' houses. In this film episode thing, they just break into people's houses that are empty and freaking use them as garage practice band stuff. And it, Why? Why would you use an abandoned house? There's, there's drug addicts and stuff out there. You're going to die. You're going to get killed or kidnapped or something. It was the 90s, man. That was when everybody started freaking out about stuff like that. My mom, wouldn't let me, my mom and when I was a kid born in 1994, my mother would not let me even sit in the car at gas stations, even though she was right there and did not have to go inside of the gas station. That's how terrified people were in the 90s of things like that happening for people who weren't around at that time. You guys could have died. <laughs> it was a terrible example to set for kids. To, to tell them to just go hang out in abandoned buildings and stuff. And now you see all these YouTuber explorers on YouTube and stuff that are going to places encountering homeless people and stuff that are trying to kill them. And drug addicts and stuff, too. Uh, it, it is not a good episode. <laughs> not a good moral for kids. But, again, the puberty thing, they have to beat that to death in here. Uh, that is something that just becomes the most uncomfortable thing that Goosebumps has ever dealt with in my entire viewing of this show and these books. This is possibly... I haven't seen the Don't Go to Sleep episode yet. I'm about to watch that after I record this video. It's possible that this might be the worst thing to ever come out of Goosebumps, aside from the IDW comics, which are also, in part, debatable about whether they're worse. <laughs> but this is horrible. This is such a bad episode in almost every possible way. But for me, and my naturally sarcastic, rude mannerisms, I cannot help but love this because it's bad. Like, traditionally horribly bad. And a lot of that love comes from JonTron. At one point you have in the episode, when Larry first starts growing hair on his arms because of the suntan lotion, he and his friends put on, put on their face and their bodies and stuff, and he starts growing hair all over the place on his arms and everything. It starts freaking him out. He starts to wonder if they're going to die from this. And uh, Larry at one point has to go in his bathroom and try to shave his arms and stuff with the little electric buzzer his dad has. Without them finding out that something happened. He doesn't want to tell his parents about the whole lotion thing. And 
he's buzzing his arms and he's doing the most obnoxious humming noise ever to try to drown out his parents hearing the buzzing noise from the electric buzzer, which you're in a bathroom, there's an echo, you're an idiot, Larry. And the parents still don't know, <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to spoil too much, but I just want to hit on the big things that really irritate me and piss me off about this episode. Uh, as, as Larry's going on, he's like, hmm, 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 as he's buzzing his arms. Now look at me, I'm a hairy fellow, okay? I couldn't do that either. I couldn't pull that off. Why, did, why would Larry think he could pull that off? And that's not even natural looking. What was on his arm, it doesn't look like this. This is a little excessive, God, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but the stuff Larry has is like thick, like, wolfman arm type stuff, like the like some Lon Chaney Jr. type thing. And the dude is just humming as loud as he possibly can. Every time that I see that clip, either on YouTube somewhere or on John Tron's videos, I think of John Tron doing that. And as soon as I heard him doing the humming, the excessive loud humming in this episode, I started thinking about John Tron. It just makes me laugh every time I think about it. Because it, that was such a funny set of videos. If you haven't seen John Tron's Goosebumps two-parter videos, you should check that out. They are hilarious. They are some of the funniest things he's ever done. I love classic John Tron from the Game Grumps era, from his earlier John Tron channel stuff that he was doing, like the Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark stuff. The dude was a comedic genius. He still is. He still can be. He's just not doing as good, in my opinion. He's not doing the kind of content I'd love to see him cover. If John Tron ever became a freaking Goosebumps YouTuber, that'd be the end of YouTube. It'd be amazing. It'd be amazing. If he and Jack Black both would become Goosebumps YouTubers, there'd be no question about, the where, <laughs> about where the world should go. Uh, it'd be impeccable to have them in the community even more so. But anyway, <laughs> John Tron's videos are fantastic. I recommend them highly. This episode I do not recommend highly. It is horrific in every possible way. And it's a slap in the face to anybody who likes the book, for that matter. Again, I thought the book was mostly okay until the ending was so bad. Uh, it kind of meanders, but it was supposed to be like snowy outside. I think I spit everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but I think I did. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm getting old. I can't find out what spit leaves my mouth. Um, <laughs> this is a gross video. Just everything. The puberty, the spit, all that stuff. The lotion discussion, everything. It's going to be an awkward video. It's going to be one that we all remember for a long time. Uh, <laughs> it's just, I'm uncomfortable if you can't tell. This whole video, I don't even want to talk about. The, the My Hairiest Adventure is complete crap. The fact that this followed, Stay Out of the Basement Part 1 and Part 2. If you had seen those two episodes, as great as they are, as great as they are, I really like the book, I really love the two-parters. If you had seen, in two previous weeks, or at least last week, let's say, if you had seen Stay Out of the Basement Part 1 and Part 2 for the first time ever, and let's say it blew you away because of how creepy it was, how well done it was, and then this week you get My Hairiest Adventure. Would you continue watching the show at that point? I think a lot of people would have left. I think a lot of people would have dropped out. And I really hope this is a mistake that the new show does not make. The new show that's been announced recently, in case you don't know about it. It's coming out. Supposedly it's in the works. That doesn't mean it's going to be officially made, but it's, supposed, it's supposedly in the works for sure, if Sony says. I don't know <laughs> I think about this. I'm hoping and praying that they do not touch My Hairiest Adventure. There are so many Goosebumps books, like 300 books out there. Whether you include just the old stuff, the 62 classic books from the 90s, or the new stuff, I hope and pray that My Hairiest Adventure does not get touched whatsoever because it's not a good story. It's not a good one to adapt. Just let R.L. Stein do his thing in his book and leave it at that. Don't, don't adapt that story. Don't do it. Um, My Hairiest Adventure. It is... <laughs> absolutely awful in every possible way it's a slap in the face to anybody who actually enjoys the book like i said or the show for that matter it, it's completely a slap in the face to people who loved again the week before this came out was stay out of the basement part one and part two and then you get my hairiest adventure with the embarrassing uh, puberty nonsense and the the shaving thing and all that it is just and some of the things Larry does in the episode are just nonsense like the dinner scene when he jumps out the window i like why why would you do that it just, it's bad. It's really, really bad. I understand we're talking about a kid's show. I understand we're talking about, it, talking about an adaptation of a kid's book. I get that. But the book was at least relatively sensical for the insane situation that Larry was finding himself in. And Larry himself wasn't an idiot. This whole episode, he feels like a drug addict. Like, just an idiot. Just a guy that's always high all the time. Uh, it's bad. It's really bad. If I had to rate this particular episode of Goosebumps, My Hairiest Adventure from Season 1, Episode 13, on a five-star basis. I have to give it just that one extra star because it's so horrifically awful that I can laugh at it and be cringe-induced kind of stuff. A coma, you know, with cringe. A coma cringe. Let's call it that. 
I can get something like that out of this episode because of how horrifically bad it is. And I guarantee if you sat down and watched this with somebody else who laughs a lot <laughs> about a lot of stupid things or just likes making fun of bad movies or anything, you will love this. You'll have the bomb of your life. I guarantee if you've already seen the JonTron episodes and you see this for the first time, you will have a blast and you will never forget the JonTron episodes because they work so well and they make so much great fun of this crappy episode of the show. I don't even know. The fact that the same show produced things like Seattle of the Basement, Haunted Mask, Haunted Mask 2, Night of the Living Dummy 3, which is my personal favorite, uh, the Don't Wake Mummy episode, which was fantastic, it was an adaptation of a short story. The fact that this show adapted so many great books into great episodes, and then it produces trash like this, just complete, utter garbage like this, is just beyond me. And I think it's insulting, frankly. Anyway, what are your thoughts? <laughs> After my giant rant on my Harry's adventure, put your thoughts and comments down below. Even the cinematography is crap, and I understand this is a low-budget show. I've said that on numerous amounts of my reviews for the episodes. But again, when you have something like Stay Out of the Basement, or even the crappy Deep Trouble couple of episodes, and you go to this, it's bad. It's really bad. And I'm curious, after seeing, in a second, when I go in my next room to watch Don't Go to Sleep, the, the whole episode adaptation for that, I'm curious about whether that's going to be worse. I don't know how it could be. I don't know how people could label something like Ghost Beach the worst of the series, whether it be the books or the episodes, and yet something like this exists. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below, guys. I would love to hear what you have to say about My Hairiest Adventure, the book, the TV episode. Would you like to see this episode remade in the new TV show? We can all thank God that in the two movies, Goosebumps and Haunted Halloween from 2015 to 2018, that they did not put anything in here. I was worried when I saw the film for the first time that Champ would become the My Harry's Adventure guy just as a joke, as a running joke in the film. And he didn't. So that was nice. It could have been worse. It could have been. We could have, a, we could have had a, a puberty thing beat over our heads in the Goosebumps movie. And it didn't happen. Thank God. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below, guys. Thank you for watching. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today and protect you from bad Goosebumps episodes. And uh, goodbye. <laughs>